What's going on guys? It's Codemaster Hard Rock. This is my fifth time trying to record this intro, so I'm just gonna get right out with it. This video is a lot shorter than my interviews with uh, Mark Thompson. So the reason for that being is I didn't have too much time on my hands and neither did uh, Dan Green or Darren Dustin. But that being said, those two were absolute incredible people to talk to. Uh, you guys are gonna learn quite a bit. Uh, I only got maybe uh, two or three questions out for this video, but we did have like a little after thing where I learned a little bit more. I did not get a chance to record that because, well, I already shut down my programs at the time. But with that being said, guys, enjoy the video. Come prepared for defeat. Love it. Sure. Yeah. What do you want to know? So what? I understand that Kaz, obviously, he's more, he was a huge chaotic fanboy. And yeah. obviously a lot of people thought he was crazy. And there was even a <laughs> point where there was an episode where he even kind of goes to therapy and all that. And yeah. I understand like four kids, they were very kind of like wishy-washy on some serious subjects. How does it make you feel uh, that a children's show similar to Chaotic or even similar to Yu-Gi-Oh! would touch on something like that? Specifically, uh, even yeah. with Kaz, and can you relate to that in some way? Right. I was pretty proud of that of that episode, and um, I, I directed the show too, so I had, had a okay. hand in sort of crafting crafting how that went. And uh, yeah, it was it was in a sort of lighthearted way, but it, but just that to deal with mental health and you know, to deal with like an in-school mm -hmm. um, mental health issue like that was like, was really, um, I don't know, touching and important, I think. It's funny, I just um, I just chatted with my niece's class. She's like 10 and they had like a, oh, what do you do for a living thing? Mm -hmm. And I showed a clip from that episode. Oh, wow, um, that's not, awesome. Not, yeah, just sort of the lead up to the, to the, to the scenes where he goes to the, the therapist. But yeah, I love that. You know what else I love too about... Um, you know, th these action action based shows, they're so like boisterous and intense and there's yelling. That see that show had so many like calmer scenes where we're just like chatting and having a conversation. Right. And I and I love that stuff. That's that's my favorite part of the directing process is like the real life sort of um yeah, calmer stuff. I love that you know that show because so many people don't. <laughs> I absolutely love Chaotic. I actually run a YouTube channel where I talk about Chaotic and Here's a here's another oh. fun question. Actually, did you know Chaotic yeah. is coming back? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian Gannon. What's happening? Uh, Brian Gannon uh, seized all the rights and is uh, putting it back. And he's with a company called Epic Story Media. And right now they're okay. uh, trying to touch the game first, and then they're going to be doing, uh, I guess, the show later, like continuing it, or at least that's the plan. So, Fabulous. yeah, and I, I spoke with Mark Thompson. Uh, he voiced Kaor and uh, Nadrin and Peyton in the show. And it yeah. was his first time learning about all that as well uh, when I brought That's that to crazy. life for him. And oh my I gosh. guess my next question that I, I do want to bring up is uh, a lot of uh, people my age, anyway, who are still fans of Chaotic, there's this huge fan base that is still like just thousands and thousands of people who still play the awesome. game online, even though it's been discontinued for almost, you know, six, seven years, give or take, something along those lines. Wow. How does it feel knowing that there's a fan such as myself who's turning 24 this year and fans like wow. my grandmother who's almost 70 <laughs> years old? Like, there are people who are just oh nuts about the work that you do, especially chaotic. That, 
That's insane and amazing. I had I had no idea. You know, when 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 they were putting the show together, and I thought it was just such a brilliant idea or their attempt to, you know, have such a um, a card game and a cartoon that then was going to have this sort of digital platform. It, was, it seemed like so cutting edge at the time, and unfortunately, it didn't work out like it should have. You know, like there were there were flaws in it, and you know that I think that's part of why it didn't survive which was kind of crushing like we did i think we did sort of three seasons of of episodes and like mm -hmm. um we had just come off of Yu Gi Oh, and we still had like you know P pokemon was still sort of anyways and so um i love hearing that that it's continued on and you know ha ha you know, attracts someone as young as you and mm -hmm. and someone like your grandma too that's that's like that blows my mind <laughs> oh yeah no she she thought it was rather interesting because they're, like, specifically with Kaz, you know, there are people who are just absolutely insane and, and huge fans of it. And then you have some characters who are on the opposite side of the spectrum, like um, uh, the character uh, Sarah, for instance. Um, she was a little more, like, pulled back into reality. It was like, no, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Meanwhile, Kaz thinks it's, like, yeah. the greatest thing in the world. Um, <laughs> what Do was... people have, like, favorite favorite human cre human characters and favorite uh creatures or oh, like absolutely there are definitely a lot of people who i've talked to who even you know just before you know i wanted to do this uh this little chat uh because i was trying to think of like questions that were like oh what's your favorite thing tons of people huh. had completely different answers and there were even Interesting. some uh you know answers that because there was some uh information about the season four that you guys were mm. uh, planning as well as the future sets that weren't even released. And I guess that's a wow. good segue actually to my next question mm. that I have written down here. Do you yeah. have any knowledge on like what season four would have been like, or any ideas that you would like no. to see anyway? I don't think I even know that they were like plotting one. So, so you know what I mean? So that the right. fact that they, even if they, there were meetings about it, like that, that's interesting. Cause I had, I had no idea. Um, even though like, you know, I, I, I worked there, you know what I mean? Right. Like I, it was, yeah, um, I I would be so curious to see where it was headed next. You know, it again, it had such potential, and like, so the cards were like gorgeous. Like the the artwork on the on the cards, I think is just amazing. You know, and um, again, it had such potential. Great cast, Mark, um, the guy who played Tom. You know, Sarah, the, the whole game was like, I don't know. It was such a pleasure. It was it was really the first show that I directed. Um, that was from scratch, you know what I mean? And right. so that was a real learning learning curve for me and like, I, I full on loved it, so. Funny enough, that was actually gonna be something I was gonna ask, like, how, knowing that, you know, you directed uh, a lot of the uh, episodes, if not, you know, just the whole series, was there any yeah. um, design, or not necessarily design, but I guess like, things that you put out there that got rejected and vice versa, that you wanted something, but just never panned out? Oh, interesting. Um, there were definitely like moments from, you know, from episode to episode where like we, we uh, often in the booth, you know, you're trying things a couple different ways and like, you know, we, we throw like a more like edgy delivery or like bend the script a little to do something just a little crazier. You know, often we, they settle, they, they use the more conservative choice. Um, <laughs> I remember one, there was one moment with, with Mark actually, who um, as Peyton, Peyton is like, I forget, it was this crazy animation where he was having all these sort of synapses at one time, like all these a million thoughts at once. Mm -hmm. And we went like frame by frame. And so for every single thought he had, we made like a little, uh, 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 a little noise. And then when we put it all together. It was like, I don't know, it was glorious. I still remember it. And this was like, what, mid 2000s? Right. Um, and they cut it, they cut it. They, they, I don't know why, but it got changed and it was in the, oh. in the garbage. And I was like, oh, son of a gun. But, um, Wow. It happens. Well, I mean, yeah, 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 I understand like a lot of shows and like I'm an aspiring voice actor myself and I do understand that, cool. you know, there's a lot of things that like you, you could just record the same line a thousand times, but they'll probably take yeah. like the first like five takes or whatever. And you're like, well, there goes all that time. <laughs> um, right. Was there it ever... happens. It, uh... Oh yeah. Was there ever uh, a card that like in the show that you remember well that you're like, oh, I want it. <laughs> I want it. I remember Kaor looking really cool. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember that Kaor card distinctly. I don't. I don't know why, because I, I don't think I. 
they might have given me some cards. I don't, I don't know that I actually ever owned them, but, um, but yeah, I just thought his design was incredible. And then, you know, Mark's voice to match it was just like, okay, whenever, whenever you, you're in doubt or like not sure who should play a character because it's so larger than life, get Mark. Mark's the guy. Right. Um, <laughs> he could do anything. Oh man, it it was incredible talking to him. He was so full of you know just life and excitement and when i reached out to him about chaotic um he got even more excited he was like oh somebody else who knows uh, about it yeah let's do it that's so great yeah he is probably the best voice actor i've worked with he just he can you know he's always got a new role a new voice up his sleeve and he's like just constantly castable you know so mm -hmm. um he is he's he's the bomb um <laughs> my next question uh if you yeah and i have time for one more oh uh, yeah, not a problem. I guess my last question. If Kaz and Pegasus were to meet, how would their interaction be? <laughs> you know what? I Someone asked this at, a, at another con, and, like, it got me thinking that they're both, they're both similar. They're both, like, really cerebral. They're both, like, analytical. They come from things, you know, they, they think before they act mm -hmm. um, strategy, you know? And uh, I think they, you know, I, I would hope Kaz wouldn't turn to the dark side or anything, but... But I, I think they would collaborate well, you know, and mm. um, Kaz is brilliant, but maybe a little naive and maybe he would do, you know, some some chores for Pegasus, you know, do some some reconnaissance and that sort of thing, probably without even knowing he was doing it. Mm. Um, and, um, and yeah, and they would exchange notes on, a, on a quite a cerebral level. That's a good question. That That is so awesome to hear. Maybe um, today Kaz is some master bad guy somewhere. Who knows? <laughs> He's a master <laughs> underworld player. <laughs> Yeah, right, exactly. Um, it, thanks for the amazing questions. This yeah, is this has been such a treat. Yeah. Uh and thanks for watching the show. And yeah, I gotta check out these message boards and find out uh more about season four. Interesting. Yeah, I, I hope you get a chance to reach out to Brian Gannon. I mentioned to him that I'll be talking yeah. with you and Dan Green, uh, because I understand oh, he cool. voiced uh Tang of the Toborn and I'm gonna be talking about that stuff like that later. Um Very cool. But yeah, do you can you still do the cast voice? I guess that's my last question. Can you still do the cast voice? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I I teach voiceover, and I feel like I'm constantly like doing this sort of high pitched thing, or like Tom, we shouldn't go, <laughs> or he's like, you know, it's uh, neurotic and high pitched and kind of in the nose. You know what I mean? Right. That so, that's incredible. There he is. Hello. <laughs> hey. Hey. Oh. hey, Nathaniel. Good to see you. It's good to see you. How are you? I'm good. I you voiced uh, some uh, characters such as like Tanga Toborn, Tartarek, mm -hmm. Codemaster Imthor, characters like that. And I wanted to touch on that show uh, for a bit yeah. while, while we're here. Sure, yeah, whatever. You, I mean, you probably know more about that show than I do at this point. But for yeah, sure. let's talk about it. <laughs> um, do you have any memory or recollection from recording that show? Uh, specifically referring to the character of Tanga Toborn, who's like the lion -O type character. Right, right. I do remember, um, I mean, he's the character that stands out most to me. I think that's the one I, I did the most work on. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I loved that I got to portray a character that looks so cool, this sort of like animal-humanoid hybrid. I'm a big fan of werewolves and lycanthropy in general. And so um, I thought that was a great fusion. And I actually, even though I was probably a little older than the intended audience, I watched Thundercats. I still do. Okay, um, I, I mean, I'm talking about the original one, right? Okay. So um, I'm not dissing any of the others. And if they were ever to make a live action movie of that, I would totally check it out. Yeah, si sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> but Tagith Tobert, I remember the other thing that was uh, unique to me as a, as a performer was that was the first time I did a character where they actually pitched my voice down. And, um, and, I, and at the time, I felt like I was failing because I, I wasn't able to get to that naturally. Right. Uh, fortunately, now, now that I've aged, I think I can, I can hit those notes now without a without the assistance of technology. Could but, you give us a sample? Um, uh, you know what? I What would be something that Tangeth Toborn would say? Um, for the overworld, probably, comes to mind. For the overworld. Oh, my God. I love it. That was awesome. <laughs> All right. <laughs> my At least I'm not far off. <laughs> it's, what's funny is um, across the room in my apartment, my fiance is the biggest fan of yours. And, uh, you know, and she, she's super excited. I know she's probably going to watch this as soon as I send it to her, like, hey, check it out. But um, when, when it comes to Chaotic, um, 
here, here's, I guess, some information that I'm sure, because uh, I talked to Darren Dustin, as well as Mark yeah. Thompson, uh, yeah. who also was part of that show. Um, yeah. I'm assuming that you might have the same answer, but I'm still going to ask it anyway. Did you know that okay. Chaotic is actually coming back? Uh, you know, I think I did hear something about that. But I, again, I, I might, I, I'm not absolutely certain, but I'm glad that it is a rumor at least. Mm -hmm.